This is the Koenigsegg Agera RS1, and it is quite simply one of the most breathtakingly insane cars ever manufactured in the entire history of the sports car. It cost around $2.9 million when it was new. The current market value is somewhere around $10 million. It has 1,400 horsepower, and there are only 25 Agera RS models in the world, and only around eight in the United States. Today, you've asked for it, so I'm going to review this car. I've borrowed this car from a viewer here in the Los Angeles area who is on Instagram as Whitess. You can follow him there and check out his amazing car collection. And you can also check out his son's YouTube channel, Whitess Jr., which I've linked below in the description. You can subscribe and follow along for more updates on the Koenigsegg and other crazy exotic cars. Now, he invited me to come up to Los Angeles and check out his Koenigsegg. And when you get an invitation to check out a Koenigsegg, you do not say no, you do not think about it. It. You come instantly. And so I did. So here's an overview. Koenigsegg was founded in the 1990s in Sweden by Christian von Koenigsegg, and their first car was called the CC8, and it came out in the early 2000s. They followed that up with the CCX and the CCR. Those models finally went out of production in 2010, and they followed it up with the Agera, which had a 930 horsepower turbocharged V8. That wasn't enough, so then they came out with the Agera R and the Agera S which had over a thousand horsepower, but that wasn't enough either. So then came this. This is an Agera RS, and it's one of just 25 made for the entire world with 1160 horsepower. But this car also has the optional one megawatt package, which cost $270,000, yes, an option that costs $270,000 to bring this car up to 1,400 horsepower. This particular Agera, called the RS1, is especially unique as it's one of just eight Agera RS models in the United States and one of just five or six in the United States with the one megawatt package. This car is also the reigning champ for the world's fastest production car. It'll top out at more than 280 miles per hour. And yes, the market value of this car is around $10 million. Yes, that's right. $10 million for a car. So today I'm gonna to show you around this thing and show you what that buys you. I'm gonna show you all of the interesting quirks and the cool features of today's craziest, ultra insane, wild hyper car. Then I'm gonna get it out on the road and drive it and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Agera RS1, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also compiled a list of the most expensive cars currently listed for sale on Autotrader. Now I'm going to begin with a few things that you should know before we start with the quirks and features, and I'm going to start with the crest. Now Koenigsegg's logo is a crest. It sort of looks like a mollusk shell. This is Christian von Koenigsegg's family crest, and you will see it in many, many areas throughout the car, often in little tiny details that you would never think about until you think about them. And I'll show those to you throughout these quirks and features. And the first place you see that Koenigsegg shield is the key. Take a look at the key. You'll notice it doesn't look anything like the key in your Honda Civic. Instead, this is the Koenigsegg shield. That's the key. The whole key is the shield. And you flip it over, and there are only two buttons, lock and unlock. Unlock is on the right, lock is on the left. You unlock it or lock it, whatever, using that key. And as you can see, there's no place to put it on your regular key ring. But then again, you would never put a Koenigsegg key on the key ring with all of your lesser vehicles. Now, when you get inside your Koenigsegg, the key has a little spot. You might not realize it, but if you open up this little tiny center storage compartment behind the parking brake, it's the smallest center storage compartment in the world, and it has a space perfectly sized for you to stick your key while you're driving so it doesn't rattle around the cabin and so you don't lose it since it isn't on your key ring. Another interesting item is the fact that just about everything in this car is carbon fiber. In fact, this is the most carbon fiber intensive car in existence. If something could be carbon fiber, basically the rule is with this car, 
than it is. That even includes the wheels. The wheels are carbon fiber, which is becoming a little bit common in the crazy supercar world. But in this car, the wheels are hollow carbon fiber, which no one is doing. The result of that is that they are incredibly light. In fact, the wheels are lighter than the tires on which they're mounted, which is something you will never hear again. And the last thing to note before we get started diving deep into the quirks and features is the fact that Koenigsegg builds everything for this car. What I mean by that is they don't get anything from suppliers. If the car needs a reflector, they make it in-house. The car needs an engine, a transmission, they make it in-house. Gauges, climate control vents, the airbags, they make everything. This is absolutely unheard of. In any car, your car, any car you see on the street, most stuff comes from suppliers. Automakers contact a supplier, hey, we need a door hinge. The supplier builds it, sends it to the automaker, they put it together in the factory. Not in this car, everything is made bespoke, with only a couple of minor exceptions. The parking brakes in the back are made by Brembo. Koenigsegg makes the actual brakes. The windshield wiper is not from Koenigsegg, that's built by a supplier. And obviously the tires are built by Michelin. Koenigsegg is not in the tire business. Other than that though, everything, the sun visors, latches, lights, reflectors, Koenigsegg makes it all. That is pretty impressive. But anyway, we start the quirks and features with the doors, which are quite simply the single coolest doors in the car industry. Now, Koenigsegg refers to them as a dihedral synchrohelix, but basically what that means is they do this. <laughs> That is just about the coolest thing you will ever see doors do. And the way it works is actually quite interesting, as you might imagine. To start the process of opening the doors, you press this little silver button located below the paint in this little carbon fiber area that's sort of out of direct sight. You push it, and the first thing that happens is, if the windows are up, they roll down a little bit. Now the reason they do that is because of what happens next. The door then on its own sort of moves forward and swings out and the windows have gone down so they can fully clear like the front fender and the front area. Otherwise they would smash and break against the front fender as the door does its thing. So then the door moves all the way forward and all the way out and then it's just that simple. You can get into the car just like this, like in a normal car, except now the door is up here. Now climbing inside the car is a relatively simple process, whether you're doing it on the driver's side or on the passenger side. You have to be very careful, but you kind of stick one foot in, you stick your butt in, and then you're in. It isn't really all that difficult, and the doors certainly don't make it any more difficult. They actually help, if anything. But you may be wondering, how do you close a door like this once you're in the car? Well, actually, it's pretty easy. There's a little door pull, just like in most cars. You pull it about halfway, then you let off, and the door does the rest. And then, as you can see, the window goes back into the up position, and then you're in the car. So then you're wondering, okay, well, how do you get out? Well, in order to get out, you pull on the door handle, which is a regular door handle, but the back part of it is a Koenigsegg crest, which is very cool. You pull on the door handle, then you kind of push up with your elbow, and the door does its own thing, and you let off, and there it is. Now it's open, and it's cool dihedral double helix. From there, you simply get out of the car. I, of course, make this process look very awkward, but it isn't so bad and then you're out. Now, once you've gotten past the doors and gotten into the car, you will find quite a few rather interesting items, one of which is the warning label you will see mounted on the doors. Now, this is on the bottom of the doors, but it's also pointing at you when the doors are open because of the way that they open, and it is basically the coolest warning label in automotive history. It's a warning label reminding you that you need to make sure you have a certain amount of clearance and a certain amount of space when you open the door, like if you pull up to a curb, or else when you open the door, the door could hit the curb and it could damage it. Now, obviously, that would be a problem. It would be very bad if it happened, so I'm glad the warning label is there, but also, just look at that warning label. It is the coolest looking warning label ever. But that warning label is by no means the craziest, coolest, quirkiest thing in this cabin. That honor may go to the emergency hammer. <laughs> if you look to the left of the steering wheel, there's a little warning label there that says emergency hammer and it has an arrow pointing. That's because underneath the steering column in the driver footwell area, there is in fact, an emergency hammer. Really, this car has an emergency hammer and it's orange and they have to do this because if the car rolls over or it's on its side, you probably can't get out using the doors. The emergency hammer you're supposed to take out of its location, tap it against the A-pillar, it will break the windshield, 
and then you can climb out of the car in case you have a serious accident in your Koenigsegg and you need to get out. And another interesting item in this vicinity is the window, the power window. If you put the power window all the way down, you can see it's still sticking up just a little bit. There's a little quirk of the Koenigsegg you probably didn't know until right now. Now, next up, we move on to some of the buttons and the controls in this car, the most obvious of which are in this giant circle in the middle. Now, this giant circle contains basically every major function that you would want. For example, there's a button to raise the window on the driver's side, button to lower it on the driver's side, and there's passenger window lower and raise buttons as well. You also have the headlights, the parking lights, and the fog lights. This wheel of buttons also contains a button for the door locks and there is a button for the interior lights. Now you press that button and the interior lights in the center light up and they are oh so cool. Take a look at that. Your interior lights don't look like that in any other vehicle. Now the coolest thing about this wheel of interior controls, however, is not the functions that it has, but rather how it is constructed. Koenigsegg wanted no plastic anywhere in this vehicle. And so these buttons are all aluminum. Even though there's like the power window switch, which would be plastic in every other car, it's aluminum in this car. But the really cool thing is these little lights that light up telling you what each button does. In a traditional plastic button, you just make that part clear and turn on a light, no big deal. In this, they had to poke these tiny little nano holes inside the aluminum and then have a light behind it to project out and show what every button does. Obviously in the middle of that whole wheel of buttons, that's where the engine start stop button lives. You press that and obviously that's what turns on your Koenigsegg. Now above the wheel of buttons, you can see there are three separate dials, all of which have a distinctive purpose. The one on the left turns on and off the stereo and adjusts the volume. Pretty simple, just like in your car. The one on the right adjusts the climate control fan speed. Also fairly simple. The one in the middle is a little bit more complicated. If you push it in, it will turn on the automatic shifter. So you can drive this car with the paddles and shift manually and do it yourself, or you can push that and the car goes into automatic mode so you don't have to shift. But that dial is a little bit more interesting than just that. You can also twist it to the left or to the right and it turns on the backup camera, which is mounted in back just below the exhaust. And so while you're driving along, you can see, for example, if flames shoot out of your exhaust, you can see it happen while you're driving. You can also see all of the cars that you're leaving in your dust in your 1400 horsepower Koenigsegg just by twisting that dial. Now below Below the wheel of buttons, you have the hazard light button, no surprise, and you also have, maybe surprisingly, two different USB ports. Not all that weird to have a USB port in a modern car, but the strange thing is the one on the left actually hooks up to Apple CarPlay. Yes, that's right, Land Rover is just getting Apple CarPlay in its newest models. Koenigsegg's like, yeah, we already had Apple CarPlay, no problem. Even though they're an ultra small volume automaker, this thing has Apple CarPlay. That is pretty impressive technology that makes this just a little bit more usable than your average supercar. Now, next up, right next to the USB ports, you have a cup holder, which is just about the most pathetic cup holder you will ever see. It's probably an inch deep. It doesn't really hold up anything. But uh, if that's your only concern about your exotic car, then... Uh, <laughs> you're living pretty well. Now, speaking of storing things, there is in this car a glove box, although it's worth noting there's no lid to it and it's very small. It's right on the passenger side where you'd expect the glove box to be. And it just has enough room for you to put your registration, maybe a couple of other things if you need them to be in there. There's also a little bit more storage in the passenger side footwell. There's a tiny little pouch that you can stick stuff in if you have a little bit more that you need to store in your Koenigsegg. Next up, I wanna talk about the sun visors, which in this car are very strange. For one thing, they're incredibly small, which is pretty standard for most supercars. Maybe the weirdest thing about them is that they're angled. Because of sort of the way that the windshield is placed on this car, it itself kind of makes a U shape, and the visors are along the top of the windshield, and so they're actually angled, which is kind of strange. Now, the visors have no mirrors on them. Obviously, if you're driving along in your Koenigsegg, you don't need to look at yourself to know that you look cool. But otherwise, they're sun visors. They're little, they're angled, they're weird, but they're there. Now, I mentioned the crest thing. And I mentioned I was going to show you where all the crests were in this car. There's a lot of hidden ones. One of my favorite hidden ones is on the parking brake. You can see the parking brake is finished in this blue Alcantara, just like the rest of the interior. That is very cool. But the button to raise or lower the parking brake to release it, it has a crest mounted on it. That is something you will never know. They didn't have to put it there. No one would have cared if they hadn't. 
but they did because they're obsessed with the details. Now, it's the same story in between the seats. There's another hidden crest, and that would be the battery cutoff switch. Obviously, Koenigsegg knows a lot of the owners of this car have 20 exotic cars. They're going to park it for a while, so they give you a way to turn off the battery, and the battery cutoff switch mounted in between the seats is in the shape of the Koenigsegg crest which is just really, really cool. Also between the seats, you have a couple of other interesting items. One is a little plaque that tells you that this is the RS1, and it says it's limited edition, one of 25 of all the RS models. And above that, you have two interior lights. If you're driving along and you need to read a map or whatever, you can reach in and switch on the interior lights, which have kind of a cool texture when they're turned on. And those are some extra reading lights in your Koenigsegg. The other cool thing in between the seats, you can see this little ghost logo. Now this ghost logo is kind of cool in the history of Koenigsegg. When Koenigsegg was taking over some warehouses in order to build their factory, they got the warehouses from the Swedish Air Force and painted on some of the planes was this ghost logo from the Swedish Air Force. The Air Force sort of informally requested, hey, can you kind of integrate that ghost logo into some of your cars? And so they did. And so any Koenigsegg that's built at that factory that used to be where the Swedish Air Force had their planes with the ghost logo on it, those Koenigseggs also had the little ghost logo as sort of a tribute, which is a really cool thing to see. And there's one right between the seats. Now, one thing you won't see right between the seats would be a window. This car doesn't have a rear window. More on that in a minute. Now, another item I want to talk about on the inside of this car is the roof, which actually comes off. Your Koenigsegg is a convertible. The roof has this beautiful blue Alcantara, just like a lot of the rest of the interior, and it can be removed. There are three latches in the front part of the roof that take it off, and then there's two in back, one behind either rear seat. You pull it off and you can enjoy all the open air experience of Koenigsegg sick driving. And also, obviously, you can hear your exhaust a little bit better. One really, really cool thing about the roof latches in this car, the little button you press to release the roof latch, that would be the Koenigsegg crest. Ah, but of course it is. That is a very cool detail. Another cool detail of the roof, as you can see, there's a window in it. So even if you don't have the roof off, you still have access to sunlight as you drive along in your Koenigsegg. Now, next we move on to the steering wheel where there are a couple of interesting items worth noting. One is the paddle shifters. Now, the paddle shifters in this car have obviously a certain feel to them. All paddle shifters do. The interesting thing is Koenigsegg allows you to customize the feel of the paddle shifters. I'm serious, if you want like an angry, aggressive, immediate feel, you can do that. If you want sort of a softer feel, you can do that too. You can tailor the paddle shifters to match another exotic car that you might have. You can basically make the paddle shifters feel however you want them to feel, and that is pretty impressive. Another interesting item on the steering wheel here, over on the right, there is an axle lifter. If you push it, it will lift the front end of the car up so that it can clear low curbs or something like that if you're pulling into a driveway. The interesting thing about this car is it goes up quite far. It gives you like four more inches of ground clearance, and this thing can basically clear anything once it's in the axle lifted position. The steering wheel also has, over on the left, volume adjusters. There's a button to turn up the stereo volume and a button to turn down the stereo volume. Pretty standard. Also standard is the turn signals. It's just a little stock over on the left in the steering column, and the wipers, which is a little stock over on the right in the steering column. No surprises there. That operates just like a normal car. Next up, we move on to the outside of the car for a few interesting quirks and features, and I'm going to start with the tow hook. Now, the tow hook for this car is mounted down here in what appears to be like the front lip. And I figured if you actually tried to tow it from here, it would just pull off the front lip and destroy everything. But the owner assures me this is one of the strongest points of the car, and yes, this is where you tow it. I would be incredibly scared to actually try it, but apparently it works, and that's actually a structural piece. It's incredible. Another interesting item you'll find in the front is the windshield wiper, which stays right in the middle. That's a nod to like the Le Mans Racer LMP prototype cars, which do the same thing. Apparently, it helps direct the air in a position, then it gives the car just a little bit more downforce for whatever reason. But either way, that's where it is, stuck straight in the center. When it wipes, it kind of starts in the middle and goes to the driver's side, then the passenger side, and then right back to the middle. That's something you won't see in just about any other street car. Also interesting, the little wiper washer jets, which are right here in the front compartment on top of it. In between them, it says Koenigsegg, and then they come out of a piece of carbon fiber, because of course they do. Now, next up, we move on to the mirrors, which, as you can see, are mounted on these sort of curvy little posts of carbon fiber coming out of the door. It's a very interesting mounting point, but that isn't even close to the coolest thing about the mirrors. The coolest thing is the fact that you're looking at it, it just looks like a normal mirror, but then you put 
on the turn signal and wait, there is a hidden Koenigsegg crest inside the mirror that functions as a turn signal, and that is just one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's also worth noting there's a little tiny turn signal on the outside of the mirror, and if you look closely, you can see that that also has the Koenigsegg crest. Very cool. Now, these mirrors can fold in, apparently, although it takes a little bit of force and I'm not really willing to try it because I don't want to break these things, but it can be done in case you want to park your Koenigsegg on a narrow street. Next up, moving on to the rear of the Koenigsegg, you can see you got brake lights just like every other car. You also have turn signals, and the weird thing with the turn signals is when you turn them on, the entire assembly lights up, not only the little red part on the outside, but also this sort of red strip in the middle. That's not particularly weird or strange or unusual, but it's not often that you get to check out a Koenigsegg's turn signal, so I figured we might as well do that here. Far more exciting than the turn signals, however, is the situation with the Koenigsegg's third brake light. This is kind of interesting. You have the two normal brake lights, but also you have mounted in the back there, above the engine, a really cool, like, Batman-looking third brake light, which is the coolest third brake light I've ever seen in any car. Now, unfortunately, in order to sell this car here in the United States, the government wouldn't allow that third brake light to count towards the third brake light safety requirement because it can be impeded by the wing, which, of course, is gigantic. So Koenigsegg had to put an additional third brake light below the wing so it could be more easily seen. So this car actually has four rear brake lights. Now you can see right below that brake light there is another one of those ghosts. Same deal from the Swedish Air Force and the factory. It's just another little hidden thing that you only know about if you really know about Koenigsegg. Now since we're around back and talking about the things above the engine, I should mention that you can clearly see from this angle why we don't have a rear window in the car. Like I mentioned the interior, there's no rear window, and that's because this car has this optional roof scoop that takes the place of the rear window. That scoop is an option. You can choose whether you want it or not, and if you get it, you don't get a rear window. It kind of limits your visibility, but admittedly, you do get a very cool look instead. And you can see that the very top center line of that roof scoop has the little blue accent carried in from the interior, which is really cool. Two other interesting items back here. One has to do with the backup camera. The backup camera in this car is strangely enough mounted below the exhaust, which is about the lowest mounting point you will ever see for a backup camera. And this car can run E85 gasoline, which is how you get it to its sort of full complement of 1400 horsepower. When you are running the E85, some water will come out of the exhaust system. That's normal. But the funny thing is it can trickle down onto the backup camera, which can kind of smudge it and make it unusable. It's a weird placement for it. But when you're driving along, you switch on the camera. If you want to see those flames shooting out the exhaust, that's the best place to have it. The other thing you can see back here very clearly is this giant wing. Now this wing has sort of hydraulics that can adjust its placement. You can't actually do that from inside the car. There's no like button to change where the wing is located. Instead the car does it when you reach various speeds to give you sort of better aerodynamics or if you're braking to give you more drag to help slow you down, the wing automatically adjusts. And of course since I'm back here it would be a crime to shoot a video with the Koenigsegg and not film a couple of engine revs. So I'm gonna do that now. Take a listen. <laughs> a few other interesting quirks on the outside of the car. I'm going to start with the fuel door. It's mounted back here on the passenger side. You pop it open just like you'd open a normal car's fuel door and then when you do you're greeted by the fuel cap which of course contains the Koenigsegg crest. Very cool looking. And another interesting item on the outside of the car is the front turn signals, which are kind of cool. It's these little LED lights in the front headlight assembly, and they're sort of pointing forward. They look very cool when they're on. Once again, not that quirky, but how often do you really get to see the turn signals on a Koenigsegg? And since we're around front, now I think it's time to open up the front compartment, which is kind of an interesting process. First, you have to open the door because the release latch for the front compartment is inside the door jam on the driver's side in the front. You sort of pull on a latch, and then the front compartment opens. But the moment you pull on the latch, not only does the front compartment come unlatched, but also the window goes down. And the reason for that is that if the door is fully in its up position so you can get in the car, the front compartment would collide with the window as you raise it. And so the window is actually programmed to automatically go down the moment you unlatch the front compartment so that the two things don't collide, which is of course excellent engineering. Now, to open the front compartment, you come under here, and then there's a little latch you gotta pull, and then you just kind of open it right up, 
and it does its thing. And then you can see this is what's under the front compartment in a Koenigsegg. Now, as I mentioned before, the top comes off. And actually the top you can pull off and place in the front compartment. There's a little bag you can put it in or you can just stick it in there. But the front compartment is designed to be large enough to carry around the top so you don't have to leave it at home if you want to operate your Koenigsegg in convertible mode. Now, next up, a couple of other interesting items where we have the front compartment open. One is the fact that you can clearly see here that this is where you put your windshield washer fluid. But this isn't just any windshield washer fluid nozzle location. Instead, of course, it has the Koenigsegg crest on it. It just has to look a little better than every other car. You can also see up here that you have some room in this area, although really not all that much. If the roof is in its place, you can put some stuff up here, but you can't put a lot of stuff up here. This is not exactly a very practical vehicle. Now, one other question you might have about the front compartment may relate to the headlights. As you can see, the headlights move as I move the front compartment. And I've mentioned in many previous videos that the US government does not allow this. Headlights have to be fixed in place. They can't be on a movable piece of bodywork in order to meet regulations. But what happens with Koenigsegg and other brands like this is that they get a small volume automaker exemption. Basically, the government feels that, yeah, it could be unsafe if a high volume car like the Camry had its headlights mounted on a piece of movable bodywork. But for a car that's so rare that nobody's ever really going to use all that much, it isn't really harming anyone. So they give exemptions to companies like Koenigsegg and Pagani. Now, in terms of shutting the front lid, it's actually not all that difficult. You kind of bring it down into this position here, and then you push down here to latch it closed push down here, and then the front is closed. And by the way, one other interesting lighting related item in front, you see these are reflectors right here in the front bumper. Well, they're not just any reflectors, they're reflectors with the Koenigsegg crest ever so subtly placed right in the middle. And next up, since I just covered the front compartment, we might as well now cover the rear compartment, which of course contains the engine. Now to access the rear compartment, similar to how you get in the front, there is a little latch in the door jamb. This time it's on the back side, on the driver's side. You pull the latch and then it sort of unlatches the rear compartment and then you lift it open from there and it is a massive piece of bodywork that you simply remove so that you can then gaze at your Koenigsegg's glorious 5 liter V8 turbocharged engine. Now, Koenigsegg makes this engine in-house, which is very unusual. Pagani obviously uses the AMG motor, and of course for Ferrari it's pretty common to make an engine house because their volume is much higher, but Koenigsegg makes very few cars and yet they still insist on making the engine and transmission themselves. It's very impressive. Of course also impressive is just seeing the car like this. Anytime you can see any car in this state with the engine fully exposed, the suspension, the chassis, it is absolutely incredible to see it like this. Now beyond just the crazy the engine chassis look of this whole thing. There are a couple of cool little quirks under here. One is that right in the middle, you can see there's a giant one. And if you look really closely, you can see it says 1MW. That's to signify that this car has the one megawatt package, which is a thousand kilowatts of power or 1400 horsepower. That little one is only on the cars with the megawatt package. So the next time you happen to see a Koenigsegg and you look into the engine, if you see that little one, you know you're looking at one of the rare one megawatt cars. Now, there are a few other interesting quirks under the hood here. One of which is the fact there are a few Koenigsegg crests kind of hidden throughout the engine base, sprinkled throughout. One is located on the cap for the coolant reservoir. You put in coolant, you have to turn a little cap that has the Koenigsegg crest on it. But that is not the coolest thing about the coolant in this car. The coolest thing about the coolant is the fact that there is a little window right below that cap that allows you to check your coolant without having to unscrew anything or put in a little dipstick or kind of eyeball it. You can actually see how much coolant is in your car in that little window. I've never seen anything else like that. That is pretty crazy. And finally, when you're done gazing at your Koenigsegg engine, it comes time to close this. The process is a little bit challenging. You have to be kind of careful. Obviously, this is an expensive and heavy panel. Basically, you get it into this position, as you can see, and then you do the same thing you did up front. You push down hard on this side, and you can hear it latch. You push down hard on this side, and you can hear it latch, and then it's closed, and your Koenigsegg returns to its normal state. But 
We don't really want to see it in its normal state, do we? Take a look at how this car looks when it is exploded with everything open. It is really, really cool to see the doors flipped up and both the compartments open. This thing looks basically alien compared to virtually any other car on the road. And finally, we come back into the car to talk about a little bit of its technology. Now, I want to start with the gauge cluster screen. This car doesn't have sort of traditional old school analog gauges. Instead, there is a screen in the middle, which is surprisingly high resolution. All the tech in this car is surprisingly modern. This screen includes a lot of things. Obviously, it includes a speedometer and a tachometer right in the middle. It also will show you if you have music playing. And also along the bottom, it shows you a few gauges, oil pressure, fuel pressure, how much fuel you have left, sort of the usual stuff. But that gauge cluster screen is a really high quality modern screen, especially for a car like this. Far more interesting is the infotainment system in the center console. Like I mentioned before, it has Apple CarPlay and there's a lot more modern stuff than that. This car has heated seats. Seriously, tap the screen in the lower left or lower right and you turn on the driver and passenger heated seats. And there's even three stages of seat heating. You will scarcely find that in another supercar. Now that lower portion of the screen also lets you adjust some climate control functions. You can tap down there and change where the airflow is coming out. If you want to come out the windshield at your feet or out the dashboard. And you can also tap down there and change the air temperature. In this car, strangely, it doesn't show the degrees. It just says sort of min, which I guess is cool. And then max, which is heat which is kind of unusual. Other interesting items in the infotainment system. How about the fact that you use the infotainment system to adjust the mirrors and the seats? Seriously, go in there and you can adjust the driver's side mirror using the infotainment system. You tap the screen exactly where you want the mirror to move and then the mirror on the outside of the car actually does what you say. Same with the seats. You tap exactly where you want the seats to move and then the seats follow suit. The moment you touch the screen, they don't have any buttons on the side or on the doors like in other cars. Now, if you touch the little Koenigsegg logo in the middle of the infotainment screen, it brings up a couple of interesting items. There is a graphic of the car there. It will show you if you have any of your doors open, for example, and let you know. And you can scroll over and see the tire pressures. And it also shows you tire temperature, which is something important to know if you're, for example, on a racetrack or attempting a world record top speed run. One other interesting item, in the infotainment screen, you can put the car in track mode. And if you do, the car sort of lowers itself to make itself just a little bit slipperier, lower, better aerodynamics. And it happens instantly the moment you tap the screen to put it in track mode. Strangely enough, there is also a wet slash snow mode. If it's ever wet or snowy out and you're like, yeah, let's take the Koenigsegg. Although I have to admit, this is a Swedish company. And so it's wet and snowy there all the time. So probably all Swedish vehicles have a wet slash snow mode. And so those are the mini quirks and features of the Agera RS. Now it's time to get behind the wheel and drive this car. And I don't think I've ever been so nervous to drive a car before. Wow, okay. We're driving the Koenigsegg. This is about the most expensive thing that I've ever been inside, let alone operated. This is just about the craziest experience anyone will ever have. A lot of exotic cars, you drive them like R8, Huracan, you sit in them, it's like, oh, it's not that crazy, I could live with this. This thing, everything is just nuts. The, the curve of the windshield is crazy. You're clearly not in any normal type of vehicle. And the interior is so insane. Everything about it is just different from what you get in a regular car. The shifts are surprisingly quick. That little downshift there is surprisingly fast. Um, it doesn't quite feel as labor and as slow as the Pagani did. The shifts definitely feel a little bit quicker and more precise than that. It is amazing to me how much sound you hear in here. You, this is like an old school exotic car where you're really part of the experience. You can really hear it, which I wasn't really expecting and which I kind of like actually. It really does not ever let you forget that this is something really, really special and different. Yeah, you can feel that it does have, obviously it has a ton of power. Wow. Man, the sound it makes is absolutely incredible. It, it is commensurate with how much power is being delivered, and it really feels amazing. It really feels like you are getting a lot of power out of it. It doesn't feel quiet, like the Bugatti feels so quiet and luxurious and Bentley-like. This is the exact opposite of that. I love the power delivery and the way that the, the sound feels. It just feels like an angry, mean kind of exotic car. Steering is obviously really sharp, very nicely weighted, absolutely no vagueness, feels very precise. I'm only doing little movements, but the car doesn't, clearly doesn't body roll at all. It's almost incredible how immediately on a line it is the moment you start to turn the steering wheel. 
Uh, reminds me of like Huracan Performante, some of the cars that I feel are the very best in that regard. Wow. <laughs> it's amazing how much sound you could unleash in this car. I can't believe that it feels like this. I always kind of figured Koenigsegg was, they were kind of neutered and they were Swedish and it would be simple and stable and, and it does feel like that, but it also just feels like an angry, mad, exotic car that really wants you to go fast. And the steering feel is incredible. The car just feels so planted and flat more than just about any car I've driven. The owner told me before I went and drove it that it, that it feels like a, like a go-kart, like a bigger go-kart. And I was thinking, well, it's like a multi-million dollar car. It's gotta be more refined and stuff than that. It is very refined, but also it just feels like you can throw it around and floor it and it gets mad and angry and it, it does feel very tight. It really does feel like a go-kart. The shifting is great. Um, you know, I, Koenigsegg makes all this stuff proprietary. You'd think it would kind of feel crappy, but it doesn't. The shifting feel is fantastic. And looking out in this cockpit, it's a narrow windshield in front of you, and then it just kind of, it's like an airplane or something. I mean, it's incredible. Whew. The power is incredible, and the feeling of the power is absolutely incredible. The car just feels like it could go and go and go forever. Going over the lane line bumps, the chassis is very stiff, obviously. This is, uh, this is a sports car, an exotic car through and through. At lower speeds, the car feels very clearly like it wants to go. With that said, it doesn't feel as jerky at low speeds as some of the exotic cars that I've driven, especially older ones. It feels like you could drive it at low speeds, but it also feels like you're leaving a lot on the table. And so that's the Koenigsegg Agera RS1. I don't like using the term hypercar or mega car because I think it's kind of a made up classification where supercar was really all we needed. But if any car was to be considered a hypercar or a mega car, it would be this one. This is the most ridiculously insane, absolutely crazy car that you can buy today, and it's also the most expensive car I've ever driven. Of course, that's obvious because it's also one of the most expensive cars that exists. Anyway, now it's time to give this car a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the Agera RS1 looks nice, but it's more functional than beautiful. I've never found this car gorgeous. Cool, yes, but not breathtakingly handsome. It gets an eight out of 10. Acceleration, I don't even know how fast it does zero to 60, but I know it gets a 10 out of 10. Handling, same, obviously, it gets a 10 out of 10. Fun factor, again, this isn't even worth discussing, 10 out of 10. And same with cool factor, this thing just stops any car show it shows up to, and it gets a 10 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 48 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features, and I think it's insane, but I'm giving this a six out of 10. It has Apple CarPlay and heated seats and actually decent technology. It doesn't have adaptive crews or the latest modern stuff, but it deserves that six. Comfort is rough, not excessively harsh, but not great, and it gets a three out of 10. Quality is immensely high. If this was based solely on materials, it would get a 10, but reliability factors in too, and I truly wonder about these cars. In 20 years, what's it gonna be like to maintain maintain a vehicle where you can't even get a reflector or a trim piece from a dealer because there are no dealers and Koenigsegg makes all the reflectors and trim pieces. That says nothing of engine reliability, of course, which is another factor to consider. So I'm bumping this down to an eight out of 10. Practicality is obvious to everyone. It gets a one out of 10. Finally, value. It's almost impossible to say what this car is actually worth because these are so rare, but eight to 10 million is a reasonable estimate. Obviously that's stupid money for a car, but the owner paid way less than that. Values have gone up. Desirability doesn't seem to be faltering. You can't get a new one anymore. It's impossible to rate this, but I'm giving it a 6 out of 10 for a total daily score of 24 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 72 out of 100. This places it just ahead of the Pagani Huayra, but just behind the Chiron, which makes sense. The Chiron is more usable, but it's less special. The Agera RS1 is truly one of the most jaw-droppingly amazing cars of our time.